I'm gonna play this here. So yeah, let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daybreak is a cooperative game about stopping climate change. And it's going to take a team effort because our dirty energy and our various emissions are putting massive amounts of carbon in the air, more than our planet can handle, which is leading to global temperature rise, planetary effects with critical tipping points, and disastrous global crises that are putting our communities in crisis across the world. Luckily, there are tons of actions we can take to turn this around. In Daybreak, it's up to you to implement your own climate strategy. Each player is a different world power, and you'll begin with five local project cards in your play area, each with a different action you can choose to take. You'll want to pay special attention to the tags in the top right corner. They're the heart of all your actions in Daybreak. As you get more and more cards in play and you create unique stacks of tags, you'll open up powerful combinations of actions to help you and your team reach drawdown. When your recent emissions area is empty of carbon cubes and you still have an open ocean or tree token, you've reached drawdown and are pulling carbon cubes off the thermometer. Reaching drawdown is how you win daybreak. But we only have so much time before it gets too hot and too dangerous. So let's get playing, because the best way to learn to play is just to play. Feel free to follow along with the reference cards as we go. Our game is set up, and my team has just completed the global stage that starts every round. Don't worry, we'll show you the global stage at the end. Let's get into the local stage, where you and your team take action on your climate strategy. Each player draws five cards face up below their player board for everyone to see. So the cards in your hand can be played in three different ways. First, you can play a card in front of any card in your play area. This starts a new project and gives you a new action. Second, you can play a card behind any card in your play area. This supports an existing project and makes the top card more powerful. Third, you can discard a card from your hand to pay for actions on the cards in your play area. For example, I want to clean up my energy grid. So I'll take the dirty electricity phase out action by discarding a card from my hand to remove one dirty energy token. I'm gonna discard this card so I can take out a dirty energy. Nice. Good. And then I'm going to use this clean electricity plants card and I'm gonna discard my universal healthcare card. Mm -hmm. And then I can put back a clean energy. Look at you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I really want to use this reforestation action. So I'll tuck a card with a little green ecology tag behind it. Now that this stack has two of those tags in it, I can place a tree on the board, which will absorb an extra carbon emission. Well, let me just do the reforestation right now. So I'm gonna add a tree. Awesome. Where do we want to put the tree? <gasps> right here. Nice. Now let's start a new project and get a new action. I've got this alternative refrigerants card that I want to get into my play area so I can remove an emission. It requires two pink regulation tags. So if I stack it on top of my special drawing rights, I can take the action I want. But first, let's get clever. Special drawing rights lets me give a resilience token to another player once around as a free action. Since it's free, let's do that before we play a card on top of it. These resilience tokens protect your communities and lessen the impact of the crisis cards. We have three crisis cards in play, but can only see the first one, storms. This crisis card is reduced by infrastructure resilience. So let's see, I can give you any resilience. You're gonna need one of these. Yes. Infrastructure resilience. Awesome. And then I can play this card. With that free action taken, I'll stack the alternative refrigerants card on top. And because the stack now has those two pink regulation tags, I can discard my final card to remove a housing emission. I can get rid of one Ooh, of these guys. Down. Remember, there is no turn order in Daybreak. Anyone can play at any time, and you can take as many actions as your resources allow. If you're ever not sure of what to do, ask your team for advice. 
the other players at your table are the one resource that will never run out. So I can give you one or two of these green technology bits. Exactly. One edit and one ecology. I was oh, waiting okay. for the day. I'll give that straight to you. Okay. Which will help a bit. I yes. have the ability to give anyone a tag that I have. Is there are there any tags that anyone really needs right now? I have what it's do you think of this? Yes. I could pass this one to you. Yep, that seems pretty good. I think I'm just gonna obliterate the previous thing I had here. Okay. okay. Um, I do have a bridge um, card, so we can Ooh. tuck that under the oil nice. industry negligence, and then that way we don't have to worry about that. Okay, excellent. Well, let's get rid then of this factory energy. Oh, you have a lot of those. Do not need those. Mm -mm. Hey, no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's finished with their actions, so we're moving on to the emission stage. If your clean and dirty energy tokens meet or exceed your energy demand, great work nothing happens. If they don't meet your energy demand, you add communities in crisis equal to the unmet demand. As your number of communities in crisis grows, you draw fewer cards in the local action stage. So don't forget to build resilience to protect your communities. Now we add up our dirty energy and emission tokens and place that number of carbon cubes in the recent emissions area. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, oh, 20 18, 18, 18, 25. Okay, this is kind of terrifying. <laughs> it's not great. Yikes. Our oceans and our forests absorb as much as they can. Can't just be mixing trees and oceans. Quickly running out. Any carbon cubes not absorbed go on to the thermometer. So there's four of us and we do all... We do all the columns. Yeah. All the columns is terrifying. I know. <laughs> this is already starting to feel scary. When an entire row is filled, we replace the cubes with a temperature band. But when your recent emissions area is empty of carbon cubes and you still have an open ocean or tree token, you've reached drawdown and are pulling carbon cubes off the thermometer, which means you are on track to win daybreak. With the temperature adjusted, it's time for the dreaded crisis stage where we see the effects of all this carbon. First, we roll the planetary effects die once for each temperature band on the thermometer. Since we have one temperature band, we roll once and move one space on its track. If the token reaches a tipping point, it triggers the effect listed next to its track. Now we resolve all crisis cards in play from the bottom of the board, starting with the face up forecast crisis. We have storms. This was one community crisis and token per thermometer band, but however, I think we each got infrastructure. We all have yes. infrastructure, so Go no us. storms. Huge kudos to whoever tucked here. I think that was you, Lauren, right? Yeah, I tucked. Okay, so the oil industry negligence you single-handedly took care of. Wow. You're welcome. Yay. And the forest fires. The player with the lowest ecological resilience removes one tree, reduced by one per ecological resistance. So I have one. So nothing happens. Woohoo! Good round. Go team. Okay. Once all the crisis cards are resolved, discard them and any card tucked underneath them. When you've reached drawdown and survived the crisis rounds, congrats, you win. Now, if you're not at drawdown, we move to the final stage of a round, growth. Advance the round token. Everyone increases their energy demand. You'll have to generate more energy for your growing populations. Now we start the next round and can finally show you the global stage, which is how you'll begin every round of every game of Daybreak. It's sort of like a global summit where we review the forecast crisis card and decide on a powerful global project card to play. So first, we get our crisis cards loaded up according to the number of temperature bands and reveal the first one face up in the forecast crisis space. All the rest go face down above it. Would you like to do the honors? Go for it. Pandemic. No! <laughs> Every player adds one community in crisis per temperature band. Reduce by one per player a social resilience. So if you, oh no, I'm America. America. We have no social resilience. Oh. Can you generate it in any way? I can't currently. Well, we'll think about it. <laughs> Maybe something will come to us as we get more cards. Oh, that guy. Winner, winner. Yes. <laughs> Then we draw two global project cards and discuss our priorities. Tax haven regulations. Each player draws an additional card. 
you need one regulation tag per player. And I think it's going to compete with the other global project. Treaty of the Amazon? Mm. Ignore one die back mm. of the Amazon dice roll results each round. That seems good. It has like two in a round once we, so it could be good to have just for the rest of the game. Mm-hmm, sure. Although having those extra cards, that's so helpful. I like Treaty of the Amazon. Right. Let's do it. It's Let's a catch save the Amazon. Okay, um, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And How do we turn this around? Now we descend into quiet contemplation. <laughs> and now we're back at the local action stage, ready to continue taking action to reach Drawdown. And now you know how to play Daybreak. Remember that most of the rules are on the cards themselves and the handy reference cards. And you can always jump into the rulebook to get a grasp on the finer points. Strategies will change round to round, game to game, world power to world power. And if you have any questions, just ask your team for advice. It's a cooperative game after all, and we're all in this together. <laughs>